lead singers and, and legendary singers. Another one came along not long after, did it? Dave, Diamond Dave Lee Roth. I mean, he was leaving one of the world's biggest rock bands at the time, and he came back with a solo record and, and a solo band and that sort of thing. And you were part of that band behind him. Now, um, obviously, your background with, with Zappa and you've done a solo record you're there with Alcatraz. How did the recording and the writing process come for Freedom and Smile? I mean, was it a collaborative thing? Did you get to put your ideas across as well? Well, yeah, my ideas were being depended on because I was the guitar player and Dave does, you know, he doesn't write guitar parts, <laughs> you know, so I, it was very, uh, it was very cool because throughout my teenage years, I was a, um, a teenager in the seventies mm -hmm. and I was really into rock music, Led Zeppelin, Queen, Deep Purple, you know, all that really good and then progressive rock so i had the rock and roll thing in my soul so to speak you know white boy from new york italian rock and roll you could call it metal but it's it's a misnomer compared to what the word means today you know but heavy metal you know that's what we kind of alluded to it being so it was always there in me so when dave roth came along it was uh an opportunity to kind of stretch that rock and roll muscle and we kind of resonated well because he has an an, an obsidian uh, 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 he has kind of a bizarre sense of uh quirky humor and so do i you know we're, we're both kind of kooky in a way uh so I, it worked, you know, like something like Yankee Rose with the talking guitar. I mean, sophisticated rock stars don't do stuff like that. I, I, I suppose, you know, <laughs> it's just too, too corny, but it was, um, substantiated by some bad assery, you know, playing from the whole band, you know, the energy that the band created, we were just, we felt in, you know, indestructible and uh dave uh, obviously he depended on his band to come to him with music that he can then approve or disprove and then the stuff he liked he'd write lyrics and melodies to kind of like graham mm -hmm. um so yeah that was that that was fantastic because not only did i have the freedom to play anything i really wanted i had to push myself to go beyond my um even beyond my own vision so to speak so having i'll say the shadow of edward mm -hmm. hanging over me you know I, I i i didn't feel pressure because if i would have felt pressure it would have meant i was competing with edward and that's you can't do that that's foolish you can't yeah. compete with edward <laughs> you know so i was kind of i was when i was making uh those records with dave i was very at ease very uh if they were very enjoyable i loved getting in the studio and knocking out those guitar parts i didn't know what people were gonna think i i, I can't control that i just knew that i had a i, I had an opportunity to push it you know to put push the bar and i i just did my best to do that and i enjoyed it we had a great time yeah. touring with dave broth was man that was fantastic <laughs> obviously you worked with with frank zappa before that and alcatraz and things like that but in terms of dave lee roth i mean his his level of fame at that stage was was absolutely massive wasn't it and the album you worked on eatman smile was a massive commercial hit so how did that kind of resonate with you was it was that something that you sat nicely with you the kind of big commercial success that came with all that well that kind of success affects people differently sometimes you don't even realize it's happening as you're going through it at least that was the case for me um uh with Frank Zappa, if you leave, if you play with him and you leave his band, you got to go find a gig. It's not like you all of a sudden become somebody that's sought after. You know, you put your time in and it's a great gig, but 
joining somebody like Dave Roth's band, that's different. You're now a part of a group that is a personality that fits into uh, a field where now you're known, yeah. you know, and especially if the voice behind David Lee Roth, I mean, the uh, the guitar behind the voice of Dave was Edward Van Halen. And all of a sudden, who's this? Who's the guitar behind the voice now? We have to see how it sits with us because we're so used to Edward and Dave. So the recognition and the, the attention that was paid to me at that time that Eat em and Smile came out was big. I think, you know, at times I say big, but it was just, it was in a uh, small sliver of the music community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rock and roll, you know. Um, and plus we were in the basement in Dave's basement for like, uh, some, some, maybe a year and a half and they're just writing and jamming. And then finally we went to record and during all this period, there was stuff going on in the outside world, but I wasn't a part of it. You know, I mean, as far as what was going on in the press what was what is dave roth doing everything was kept very secret and um i was just going into a guy's basement and playing and then we went into the studio and recorded it was kind of like when i made crossroads i was just kind of going into the studio and filming yep. and then it and then you go home and you are a normal person and then all of a sudden it comes out and everybody sees it and then you go out and people are like hey there you are you know and uh you're like well yeah you know it, it, and then it, it takes an adjustment it was an adjustment because it was it was kind of it was interesting at first you know especially with crossroads because you can make hit records till you're blue in the face but make be in one hit movie, you know, <laughs> and just have a little part. And hey, there's that guy, you know, <laughs> every place you go. Uh, so that took an adjustment. It was fun. It, it was never my, my fame with those bands or my recognition with those bands was never so much that I couldn't lead a normal life, you know. <laughs> But it was really nice to be recognized for your uh, contribution because I started reading some nice things about uh, what I had played on Edom and Smile and the way I played. So the, the, it, I felt um, for I don't know how other people uh, may may perceive it, but I felt accepted. You know, I, I felt well um, supported in that role uh with dave because it was it could have been very precarious because dave with edward was so beloved by so many people who's this other guy and he's no edward you know whatever goes on but i i really paid no attention to that because i love the way edward played but i wouldn't want to play like anybody else but me why why would you you know because then you're not you you know so i was very uh content and and happy uh, with what i had done what i had contributed was it great I, I don't know i just know i did the best i could and it was just so nice when it was it it, it was not rejected <laughs> complete opposite absolutely 